Hello, everybody. Welcome to your Thursday edition of the Trader Merlin Show. We are going to have a great session today. We're going to basically be talking about charts, and that's all we're going to talk about on today's show. Maybe a little bit of macroeconomics, but uh, you guys have seen my guest on the program many times. I got a great visual of him over here. It's technical analysis with Mr. Sam Evans of stockability.com. Sam, how you doing? God, that sounds weird when you say that now. I actually got like a thing attached to me now so yeah you <laughs> should yeah. of course you got a thing attached to you oh this yes sam, sam sam evans of of tired and exhausted ability that's what i am but you know that's the reality of it i always tell it how it is and stuff but uh man i've missed being on the show for a little while it feels like forever since we chatted i didn't want to uh, bother you i know that you're you've got so much going on in your plate uh, starting your own thing is obviously a massive endeavor so i i didn't want to bug you but i'm going to be more regular now at least once a month I, I I like that. I like I, I like. Listen, I I was enjoying it. When I was coming on every couple of weeks. I'll happily come on every couple of weeks if you'll have me. And now you know, so it's it's all good. Uh, yeah. I look. I'm, I look in the background. Green screens. Everything. That's one thing. This is like you know what I, your show's like the director's cut version of my show, right? So <laughs> when I when I do a show, it's like yeah, you know, I got the green screen going on and everything fancy, and I come on your show and I'm like yeah, you know what, Batman's in the background, green screen's over there. So this is this is what I like. This is the stripped down version. That's I like, right. Let's get more raw. Good. We liked raw. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, it's good to be back here. What do we? Uh, What's on the agenda for today then, my friend? It's really just all charts and stocks, and I'm making a list as I see them come through here. So hello, everybody. Who's uh, ch I see Patrick and Adam, Terry, Ivzy, Dana, Tom, uh, Greg. By the way, look at that. Look at that. Check oh. that out. It's got stockability merch. Look at that Yeti, baby. <laughs> oh, nice. And it's a Yeti. You get the good stuff. So I've got uh, a lot of people asking. Let's see. I got NQ, the typical. We'll go NQ, CL. I see we've got people asking about ES okay. and gold. So we can talk about those. Uh, I want to go through one to begin with, just to get it out of the way. And uh, let me see if I can bring it up over here on this chart here. So. Guys, I'm going to share a screen with you, and then I'm going to read through uh, this question that came through from Hector, and it came through through Trader Merlin. Uh, for those of you who know, if there's any questions, pictures, graphics you want to send me, you can do it at TraderMerlin.com, and uh, just click the little button. This question nice. was dealing with this chart on GGAL, GGAL. And uh, it, it sounds like he knows you from FX Street Sessions that you used to do. So uh, here you go, making mm -hmm. friends through the network. And really what he's concerned with is uh, kind of things on different time frames. And some people will say that there's this thing called this concept of white space and that the prices before that white space are invalid. And in this chart here that I'm showing the viewers, his question really is about that oval, uh, if you will, and saying that those are all filled orders. We know that. But where the red arrow is here, yeah. It had a huge gap up on uh, July, I don't know, call it July 3rd, 4th, 5th, somewhere in there, yeah. from right around $9.35, or $9, yeah, $0.35, up to right around $10.10. .10. And he's using that as a four-hour demand zone. So right. I'll start with that. What are your thoughts on using this four-hour demand zone on this chart? Um, does that area of oval price action influence your trade at all? Uh, I I like gaps. I mean, you know, if you want to go old school with all of this, man, I'm looking at the charts as well at the same yeah. time and, and seeing it and, and zooming in. Um, I, I can't argue with that as, as a buying area. I mean, in fact, what's quite interesting about it as an area, if you look back into early June, you know, you had a very similar pattern there as well. You know, there's there's a lot of buying going on in that in that particular area as well. So, you know, if the question is, you know, does it look like a a, a good place to be a buy for a buy? I don't see any reason why not. I mean, I mean, gaps. Let's face it; they're a they're a they're a great sign of imbalance. Yes. Um, and 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 I always think that they're good. And one of the things I think is quite they're, they're quite key. I think the problem with gaps is and yeah. So to answer the question simply, yeah, it's it looks like a valid buying opportunity for me. I think the problem is that sometimes. Gaps are really useful, right? In the respect that they can be good for profit targets, they can be good for entries, they can be a good idea of market direction, and so on as well. So as long as you're using it in the right way. So in this instance, to me, this is something where you know, as a viable entry on here, I would just say on here about you know going down to smaller time frame. Not that I think a four-hour chart's really small. Um, but going down to too small a time frame, you know, you might run a little bit of risk of of, of missing an entry on that. Mm -hmm. The second thing I don't like is the price of it. And when I'm looking at the volume on it, I, 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 I'm trying to see on there, 
it looks like a pretty thinly traded market to me as well merlin from from what i'm seeing on this as well which uh, yeah i just put it this way this is not probably something i'd want to trade price action wise like it but not too sure about something you know with a low volume and a low price like that that would have the liquidity to be a viable you know short-term setup that's just my feeling on it that's all i can really tell from looking at the charts he sent to us yeah i, I agree i i like those points you brought up you know i there is an issue with this security just because it's it's under you know call it 15 bucks is kind of my cutoff and that's okay as long as you understand some of the risk of you know getting close to penny stocks now this one is from where you took the screenshot here hector is actually much lower um but i want to address that oval area okay yeah so let's talk about the oval area yeah so we agreed that as a buy opportunity i don't see anything too wrong with it that's all good so what about the oval area um so i'm just going to say this as polite a way as i can there's another individual that has the same first name as my guest today, but um, I would say doesn't really know what he's doing. And he would say that that area of oval is, is going to erase that area of white space. Look, that all happened, everything in this oval happened in the past. What happened now is where this red box is, it gapped up from 935 all the way up to 1010. So someone... <clears throat> might say that oh well that doesn't count because this area behind it that's that's filled orders who cares if those are filled orders there's a new area of imbalance created and this jump up here is absolutely valid i would 100 percent be okay trading this level regardless of what happened to the left of that gap up so there you go um i like the four hour time frame of course if you look forward what happened it did continue to go down from there and again you have to know you are going counter trend right now from august through right now it's just been an aggressive sell-off so buying that demand zone, as much as I like that demand zone, you have to know that you're going against the grain and it's riskier. But uh, all in all, forget about that uh, oval area behind it. You're overthinking it, would be my opinion. Yeah, I, I, I want to add. So let me just get, get that right on here. So what the, the theory is, the oval white area invalidates the entry at the gap that our friend is is, is looking at right now. Yep. Is that is that the question on yep. here? Yep. Okay, I, I don't see what yeah, I again I'm just being objective here. I I don't I'm not here to upset or put anyone down, but I don't have a clue what the hell that, that oval area has got to do with that because my argument would be if that oval area had anything to do with the imbalance that occurred where our red arrow is, why did the imbalance incur at the red arrow, right? right. <laughs> it's like the point of where we get the gap up in early July shows us that there's still an imbalance there. So like, I'm really not concerned about anything that's happened in the past because it would have happened then. It wouldn't have happened at the red arrow, right? Agree. That's just my, maybe I am oversimplifying it. I don't no, know. I mean, no, no, no. Hey, I'm, we, we I'm want to the, oversimplify I'll, it. I'll, look, I'll never get on a show and start saying that guy's talking crap. This girl, she don't know what to do. I will. Every, each, the, well, I, that's why I, I don't need to do it because you will, exactly. So. <laughs> I can, it can be good cop, bad cop, and I won't, you know. Um, it's not that I don't want to. I've just been slapped around for doing so in the past. Take the high road, I, brother. Take you, the high listen, road. Listen, you know me from years ago. I was a very different Sam Evans years ago, okay? Um, I've been PR'd up a little bit now, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> Wait, are you saying I'm going the opposite direction? So Sam really improved himself. Were, I'm digressing. over that thing of like, yeah, you, you've hit the mountain now, so you're now the rock and roll star who gets to do what the heaven, heaven hell he wants, right? So <laughs> I'm not at your level yet, so that's why I guess it is. You know, I'm still being groomed, but you know, you're, you're, you're the Johnny Depp. You can do it. You're the bad boy. You're the Shia LaBeouf who can do what he wants, right? Which is all good. Um, is that a compliment or not? I don't it know. Is, you can it is good. Out. I like it. But <laughs> I think he's a great guy. I love the guy. Um, but yeah, my, my point is, I just I respect everybody's opinions on so, and I'll say that sometimes. But that doesn't make any real sense to me. You know, what's always important is where is the price now? What happened the last time price was there? And you know, beyond that, in that oval space, that's already happened. So yeah, I'm I, I think it's a valid setup, and I would agree with you. I'd be wanting to check some slightly higher time frames, even that, because as you rightly say, Merlin, you can see on that chart that we are still making consistent lower lows and lower highs on the daily chart. So I'd want to see some real big time frame stuff. Mm -hmm. And I do not believe you've got any real major time frame support coming into probably at least $8.73, which would be probably the better place to buy. That's just in my opinion. There's probably going to be a better chance of it rounding next. It looks like that'd be a higher time frame. But I'm working on two charts, Merlin. I can't really see anything else. Right, so, right. Uh, um, yeah, no, I, they, I don't. And Hector, here's the point. Sam said something I really like. He said, am I oversimplifying it? And and the answer is yes, he's oversimplifying it. And that's exactly what he sh we should all be doing is bust this down as simple as possible. you got a lot of stuff on your charts here, the way you draw it. Um, yeah. Look, the only thing I care about, there's only one thing on this chart that matters, and that's how that price jumped up. I actually had that chart back up here. 
the only thing that could cause it to move from this red box to this red line here, that jump up where I'm drawing on the screen right now, is an imbalance, regardless of what happened in the past, okay? That's, that's irrelevant to me what happened in the past. There's only thing that could cause that is more buyers than sellers, <laughs> period. You can you can point your finger whatever you want, but buyers outnumbered sellers, and we need to pay attention to that, so I love your chart setup. All right. Yeah, We've, I do, and, and I'd also say that as well. Here's one other thing I'd love to add to that, because you, yeah. you also then get people to run and go, well, well why were they buying there? And yeah. I'm like, I don't have a clue. Yeah, who, and who cares? I, I'm, I'm never gonna know. And they're like, but fundamental analysis. And I'm like, all right, let, let's talk about fundamental analysis for just a second, okay? I am sure that somebody with a lot of money, a group or an investment company with a ton of money, right, was, was buying in that area and they'd done all this incredible research and they'd sent out their analysts and they've done all their worldwide studies and said, hey, this is a security we really want to be invested in for X, Y, and Z, right? So they've gone in with a big order and pushed a massive move up in the market, right? They did it. They did buy for fundamental reasons. The problem is, guys, they're never going to share that fundamental analysis with you, mm -hmm. right? So they've already made a decision. <laughs> based on their analysis to buy something and the result is the move up. So here's the thing, if they're that keen on buying it at that price because they did the analysis, come buy it the next time it gets there. They've just already got some for the next time it comes back. Right. That's what I'm saying. I don't discredit fundamental analysis, but as a timing mechanism, it doesn't really work. And that's why I like what you're saying, Merlin. The last time it was there, something spurred them on to buy. We don't know what the heck it was and, and who really cares? You know, At the end of the day, somebody was trying to buy a lot there. and. It's like this. I always say this. If suddenly, you know, gas prices drop to a dollar a gallon, guess what you'd do? You'd go fill up, right? Because right? you know it's probably unlikely to stay there very long. End of story. You yeah, know? absolutely. Uh, you know, and Sam is right. He's saying, I don't know exactly why, but we could look at this four-hour time frame and probably break it down to a 60-minute. And if you look directly over here, draw the red arrow, yeah. you'll notice there was a, a, a rally base and a rally. So, you know, this is an area where there would be a probability of it turning, and it did in hindsight. So... Uh, yeah. Forget about the, the, don't overthink it with regards to price don't action. Don't overthink it. <clears throat> don't overthink it. And I'd always say this as well. You know, sometimes it's less about entry and more about location. You know, for me anyway, you know, I want to make sure I'm at a good price overall because if you overthink an entry, sometimes you end up missing it, right? Or yep. you overtrade in that area too. So just a little, just a little extra for you guys. All right. Um, I'm going to move on to the British pound. Okay. And the reason I'm bringing up the British pound is we had David Warner on the program yesterday, which I thought he was going to lose his mind yesterday Why? talking about the British pound. He's so bullish on the British. I don't think I've ever seen him as giddy bullish. being bullish on the British pound uh, going forward here. And I just was curious. And it's not like as of this exact moment. He's just talking because of Brexit, because of the macro big pictures. I mean, I, the viewers that watch the show were kind of laughing out loud. I was too. It was, it was hilarious how, how he's just like, come on, man. I'm buying everything. I'm buying. I'm like, wow, Dave, relax. You're going you're gonna to blow a fuse. Um, what are your thoughts on the British pound? It's really funny because I've been short on it since uh, – what day did I get short on that in the trade room? I've been short on it since September 16th. So what you know for a little while now, almost you know, uh, you know, ten, ten days on it right now. Um, I actually have I've just kind of got to a, a profit taking area, you know. If you if you like on this, I've just kind of like come to now because I'm getting a little bit of point where I see a little bit. But I, I gotta say to you right now, I'm bearish on it still. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know what. You can believe Dave or you can believe the Brit, right? Uh, right. Yeah. Like, all, all he doesn't know his like, currency. He knows the dollar. I know the pound. <laughs> Trust me. I know how bad the pound is. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. That's you great. know, I mean, it, it's nothing to do with that, but you know, we're at definitely a little inflection point. Um, you know, definitely right now, you know, we're at a level where I expect a little bit of a bounce, and we've been seeing that just a little bit. But if I actually look at these charts on here, and let me go bring up, hey, why don't I just share some charts with you and, and show you what I'm looking at? Does that sound good? So here we go. I'll go and share my charts with you so you guys can see it. Okay, yeah, go for it. Uh, tell me when you can see that and when you're broadcasting. There we go. We got it. All, all right. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So let's just make sure I've got my Zoom functionality on here as well for you. I like to just do all my fancy stuff on here when I can. Good. Ooh, that's um, special. Yeah. I, listen, it even gets even more special. If I press this button, I can go do 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 and do all that as well. So it's pretty neat. <laughs> <laughs> I've had to learn how to teach online. You know what I mean? So um, it, I've got some pretty cool tools. Yeah. So i got to say to you right now, I mean, while I would say there is bullish potential 
on this market. It also depends, what we've not spoken about here, is what kind of time frames uh, Mr. Warner is talking about right now. Because uh, at the moment, you know, I got to see on here, you know, one thing I would say on this daily chart that we're seeing here right now, consistent lower closes on here. Now we're getting a little bit of, you know, a softer, you know, kind of doji affair on here. And I wouldn't be surprised to just see maybe a little bit more trickle to the downside on this. But if we're getting down a little bit more to this area, then okay. You know, now we're up to me, the lower end of a range. I mean, this does concern me here. I got to say this wick. Yeah, right? right. But yeah, of course, 125, 120, huge area on that. Could I expect to see something like this? Absolutely, Dave. I'm with you on that one. Just not quite yet. I mean, it is tricky. We've got a little bit of, 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 of a little bit of an area kind of to deal with of, of buying activity going on in this particular point. But you know, that's a weekly chart I'm looking at there. More importantly to me than the weekly chart is the monthly chart, and I'm gonna that always is gonna trump it. So for me, uh, I like what Dave's saying. Uh, I just don't know what time frame he's saying it in. Mm -hmm. I have got tight on this. I brought stops down. I've locked in profit. I just see a little bit more downside, and I'm gonna throw it out there that I would be expecting to see a bounce around 125. There's my analysis on that. I'm 100% with you. I, you know, I actually was hoping I could disagree with you, Sam. I was like, God, I want to, I want to go. No, I don't agree. Look, I'm gonna switch to my chart. You can keep your charts up, but here's so I can draw on mine. Not as good as Sam does because I don't have some special zoom feature out there. Um, it's free, mate. It's free. Trust me. But you know, <laughs> you notice the line. I've, I've got three lines on here, and I think that this is actually kind of lines up with Dave because you know David doesn't do traditional supply and demand. It's mainly the quarter theory. And you look at that 125 mark. It, it's right here at the bottom end of this demand zone that was the origin of this big rally that started on the 20th of July. I, I agree with uh, Evans. I think that this is going to be a maybe a little bit of a bounce here. It's deserved because of what we saw, this consolidation on the end of July. You can see here July 22nd through 24th. It was pretty much just sideways for uh, a couple of days. All right, that's hesitation. That is going to act as an area of demand. We'll see a little bit of a bounce here, but I don't. I just don't see it ripping all the way back up. And part of the reason is one of my... Um, things I love to follow is what's going on with regards to sentiment. What is the, the general behavior of price? And if you notice on this price chart, just look at the last two weeks, guys, from this cursor over. I'll put a vertical line here. Preponderance of what color candles? They're all red. And how big are those candles? Are they bigger than the green ones or are they smaller? They're right. way bigger than the green candles, which tells me there's a change in sentiment here and then all of a sudden things are becoming much more bearish um, for whatever reason. Who cares what it is? It feels like this has become more bearish. So I am bearish. I agree with you. 125, I think, is the bounce point. Yeah, I mean, just on the final thing, that the, the area to look out for next week is this. So it's Friday tomorrow, right? I if Let's put it this way. If we close below, I'm going to say 128. Uh, and that's going to be that new threshold on there as well. Then, then we'll, we'll we'll probably see lower. I mean, again, look, you know, this would be the key for me, you know. And again, you know, you got to think about that drop base drop formation potentially forming on here at the moment as well. But I'd like to see that if we if we're trading them, if we can't hold 128 Merlin, then I've got a good chance of getting back down to that 125. Well, yeah. obviously, I'm going to say that because I'm short on the thing. But <laughs> now, all jokes aside, what leads my decision? Uh, my, what leads my decision? You know, is it out of everything, guys? Really, is this monthly chart? And you know, all it really is is a glorified ugly little range and we're getting down to the lower part of the range so yeah dave i agree with you i just don't think it's ready to quite go yet i think it's got a little bit more downside on it but who cares you know i've already locked in some profits so if if, if i'm wrong i'm wrong all yep. good <laughs> yeah no I and mean, i'm with you uh kevin it's a good point you mentioned he goes but that's in the lower time frame uh it should be down in the lower time frame as it comes into demand yes um obviously if we want it on the lower time frame it's gonna have to be coming into that demands on on the low time frame so uh, agreed with you on that one and, and this is interesting because sam you were looking at um some longer term stuff i don't usually start off with that monthly i know you were looking at the monthly how how important is it for you to to bring up that monthly time frame right well so i mean i, I just took the screen screen share down but i'll put it back up again so we can uh, so we can see it and so on but hugely important for me so um again i'm not like just doing a glorified punt for what i do on here but i have this concept that i call 4d charting that i'm you know, like I, I created a new curriculum for everything we do at the, at the in stockability and one of the things was this concept of four-dimensional charting yeah it just sounds kind of cool right but it does I sound good charts you know, I use four charts and, um, you know, the idea is, is like I want to ascertain trend. I want to ascertain locate location and so on. And, you know, for my style of trading, you know, what I look at is, is like my, look, let's put it this way. Forex for me, you know, I'm involved in everything, futures, options, Forex. Forex for me is I, I almost treat it like. 
I mean, if I could treat it like investing would be an even better way. Like it's like buy and hold or sell and hold, right? Mm -hmm. So like my outlook really is coming from the monthly chart. And I and I see something like this, okay, you know, on the monthly chart right now where we are at right across this area. I'm like, well, we're at the top end of a monthly range. If this thing holds, we're probably going to go all the way back down again. And I'm prepared to hold to that. And I'm very hands off with it, you know. And the beautiful thing is why not take a scope like that on, on Forex? Because on a monthly chart, I can get away with being, you know, having a wider area. Area, you know, like I'd rather capture consistent three to ones and five to ones on bigger charts than try and keep getting 12 to ones all the time on small charts, but getting, you know, eight stop outs along the way. Right. So I, it's just a while. So, and that, but that's why I use specifically with the Forex. And, and it's huge for me. So these com these combination of charts, monthly, weekly, daily, like basically most of the trades I enter off daily charts. This entry here uh, that you can see that we took in the trade room was off of a daily chart. I'm not messing around. Another great example while we're on Forex is the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar. Um, this is a market that I'm in at the moment as well um, and I'm bearish on this right now and been short on this market uh, since around the area of I think uh, 1093 you're probably seeing around here at the moment from this area of come on, let me do that again for you man so there you go from this yep. area here Okay, see this daily area that we had? And you know, again, what I like to do is sometimes wait for the turn. Like we started to see a little bit of a breakdown, okay? Broke down and say, all right, I haven't missed it. Be patient, bang, wait for it, and off we go. I call that a momentum retrend. Mm -hmm. And um, what's my guidance on it? I'm looking a bit at this monthly chart. Now I've got a little bit to deal with around here, okay? But again, it's kind of in the middle of this range, do you see? Yep. So again, looking at the extremities on this, and look, Aussie, New Zealand, hey, look how long this thing's been ranging for. Up, down, up, down, up, years. down, up, down, for what, three, four years? I mean, they've got very similar kind of economic, you know, data. A lot of traders look at them very similarly in that respect. For me, it's just a ranging market. And I'm like, you know what, take a short, let's go see what happens. And at the moment, I'm not being funny, if we get another weekly low closer, uh, a, a weekly lower close, should I say, which we've had, lower close, lower close, lower, I'm not gonna pull out of it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I stay in bigger charts. If I'm getting consistent closes on a lower weekly chart, that is a sign of trend. Like people overthink trend you don't need to have 150 bars on a chart to ascertain trend look at a weekly chart for crying out loud if you've had four weeks of lower closes it probably tells you it's in a downtrend right yeah. you don't overthink it again it's back to what we talked about so yeah you know I love those monthly charts for that and that's one of the things I don't go quite that big when I'm doing you know day trading obviously but when I day trade I set most of my trades off of daily charts just to be honest you know because yeah you know again I look for those bigger moves Merlin so very important to me this is exactly like what I look at right here great yeah that's why I was asking because I, I tend to use like, daily is generally the, my higher time frame. I know it's different for everybody, but I'm generally uh, looking at the daily as my highest. But there certainly are times where I want to go back and look at the weekly. Monthly is almost too much for me, but um, as long as it helps you set up the framework for whatever trade it is you're going to make, do it. Um, all right, I've got multiple questions on indexes. I've got the NQ, the ES, and then the Russell. So I, I guess we could start with um, the NQ, right? We've had a pretty significant pullback on the NASDAQ 100. I'll bring up my charts here. Uh, you guys can see, I believe right now, you're probably looking down around- Looking at the Qs or looking at the futures here, Merlin? Uh, I'm on the NQ. All right, me too. I just made sure I'm on the same one, so okay, great. You know, okay. and, and, and for all intents and purposes, you know, this rally, it just looks, it's unbelievable, right? If you just look at the price move, <laughs> the swing percentage wise, I'll, I'll do a snap here. If we go from uh, trough to peak on that NASDAQ 100 futures, it's, you know, roughly 89% move. Now, guys, it's 89% in six months, whereas the average market returns for one year is between eight and 12, depending on where you start your time frame. So this is a ridiculous move it's had. Um, thoughts on the NQ going forward? Looks like two thousand all over. It does, again, doesn't it? Really? Does. I mean, I, I was actually pulling charts up about that uh, and and looking at it, and, and it literally just looks like the dot com rally all over again. Except um, it's in six months, not six years. Oh, which, <laughs> yeah, I know. Do you know what? Like, I'm I'm talking about this on the show on my on on my show tomorrow as well a little bit. It's like my partner Dan, remember who who who's on the show? We were literally chatting about this last night, and like. We're kind of stumped. I mean, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to sit here and give you this bing clarity. Oh, it's all doing this. Like I'm like crying out loud. Like you're seeing such weird things, Merlin. Yeah. You're seeing one day the Nasdaq rally, and the next day, you know, it's down. Then you're seeing one day the Russell rally, and when the Nasdaq's enough, like really weird things on the stock indexes right now, where you're seeing, you know, them pulling in different directions. Whether that's to do with arbitrage, I, I, I don't really know. My, my, my fragile brain can't take it. But all I, the, if there was one word. And look, before I say this word, okay, 
I want to make this clear. Everybody gets hammered trying to be the hero who picks the top of the market. So I am not the guy calling the bear market. Can I clearly say that, Merlin? Yep, yep. Because I've got so bored of people for the last 15, 18 <laughs> years saying, oh, the market's going back down again and or whatever, 10 years, and it hasn't. You know, So I'm not going to do that. Inevitably, stocks always go up, okay? And in the long run, well, unless it's Japan, right? But there you go. But the thing to understand about this is, you know, you've got to be realistic. And while I am still... Oh man, hope's a powerful thing, man. What I just see is this unsustainable is the word I'm mm -hmm. using. You know, again, I look at that monthly chart, I look at that daily chart, and it's like, well, it needed to do that. I mean, when you had a market that was at nearly twelve and a half thousand points, you know, it's like it's, you've got to take a bit of a profit, and that's what it seems to me is like real profit taking on here. Hard though, because again, I've not seen any real technical damage being done. Mm -hmm. Going to bring the chart up again, if you don't mind. On yeah, here. do I it. Take my, I take it down because I just obviously don't want to like if you're putting up charts and stuff, you know, confuse the matter. Oh but, no, you know, I, I, can, I can switch it around. We're good. You Anytime you want like, to bring it up. Here we go. Like, unless that gets broken, unless this here gets broken. I don't know, man. You gotta say this thing's probably gonna have a rally, and then, oh no, you know, I wasn't used to allowed to say this, but old resistance, new support. I gotta say, ten to ninety-five. There's a whole lot of work to be done around that area on this, and you know, I, I, again, we talked about this on the shows before, right? I mean, when you think about you know elections coming up and new policy and new, you know, administrations coming in, do you do you? Honest, do I honestly see some major kind of sell-off happening before that? No, I don't. I mean, I, I just, I just wouldn't be surprised. This, this doesn't. I look, everything I do, I'm cautious, right? Every time I buy, I'm cautious. Every time I sell, I basically treat this market, Merlin, every day in my live trading rooms like a range. It's crazy. Yep. You know, and I just go to the extremes and I try to sell and buy and, and take profits. I've not done buying and holding. I'm everything short term. Unsustainable is what it is. And I guess, you know, right now, I just wouldn't be surprised to see some seesaw action. And it really, really wouldn't surprise me, based off where we are, to see this market push a little bit higher up to 11.5, 11.6 again next week and then come back down again. I, I have no opinion on it. All I just know is, is the rate it went up is, is just, it's, it's unsustainable. That's the word of the day, man. Unsustainable. I, I wish I could offer you more. But it's got me spooked, man. So I'm just like, I buy it when it's really low. I sell it when it's really high and try and bag profits. I mean, that's my strategy right now. I like it. It's good. Uh, Tom made a good comment here. Let me get you guys both on there. Where do we got? Uh, I thought I had a, I, uh, my buttons are all messed up here. Oh, it's because you have a screen. Okay. Um, Tom says, sorry to get fundamental.com bubble was driven by companies that had no potential for profit like Netscape. This market's overheated because companies like Apple and Amazon are very profitable. Are very profitable. Kind of. I, you're, you're, I think you're, you're on the right track there, Tom. For me, what it is, is that dot-com bubble was right as the doors to retail investing, direct access trading were open to the retail public. That was really 1988 with SOS laws and then direct access trading happened. All of a sudden, it was so much easier to do retail investing. That ushered in millions of people who had no frigging clue what they were doing and they were just buying anything, right? So the entire market bubbled. What's happening now is a bit different, and, and you are right. We are seeing a situation where those that are invested in the markets are chasing alpha. They're chasing gains. They're chasing markets that are going to give them some return, and there were only a handful of stocks that really just went parabolic. I think what happened is you had a lot of people selling their shares of the under the, the dog companies, you know, your cruise lines, right. your airlines, and things like that, and saying, I need to chase the money. Where's that at? Apple's running, Amazon's running, Microsoft, let's thank stocks for the big buzz. So what that did is it created like a micro bubble because you now have these companies, which you're right, are very profitable. But does their current price valuation warrant their profitability? I thought it got a little ahead of itself. So all of a sudden you see these prices very overvalued and that micro bubble of FANG stocks has actually inflated the indexes. So to me, if, that, if there's a switch, if there's a change in that, which we've seen recently in the FANG stocks, it could bring this down very, very quickly, almost as quick as it went up. And I think that that's what we have to be concerned with now. As Sam was looking at this chart of the NASDAQ, you know, it's, a, it's been a pretty ugly couple of weeks. I agree with Sam on these levels. Um, right now, you have to ask yourself one simple question, or two questions. Is this just a pullback in the greater trend on the NASDAQ, 
or is this now a reversal of trend? Therefore, I now no longer need to be looking for buy points. I need to actually shift my focus to saying I'm selling rallies. And that's a decision that you guys have to make in your portfolio. I think mm. it's a little too soon to say, hey, let's flip over and be short sellers here. Um, so it more likely stick to the pullback during the uptrend. It's, it is tough because I've got pretty excited when I've seen some sell-offs and things. I mm. mean, and I was pretty excited back in April, you know, when I saw that sell-off. But then I was on a... You know, I was on a show there and everyone was saying, here we go. And it was all falling apart. And there's like, where are we right now? And I was like, mm, getting ready to buy. This was in April. And yep. I was the only person out of that panel of six who was saying buy. And people were like, well, look what's going on with COVID. And I'm like, yeah, but you know what? Every single time we've had a sharp sell off, it recovers. You know, it's like you've got to go with the probabilities. And there's never been any real technical damage done. And all the markets did was sell off really hard into another major month of the area and popped up again. So that, that's the thing, you know, I, I, until I see any real major damage being done I gotta buy the pullbacks right but I'm taking profit at the at the, at the sell-offs right. and leaving a bit like one of the things I like to do is take a little bit off the table and then leave a bit so get paid for my trouble and then see right and then you know I, I always say this is always glory anyone who tells you this is nothing is more than glorified guesswork's a liar right because that's all it really is at the end of the day right <laughs> you know it's speculation and you got to be smart with everything that you do and follow some rules so you know I go to cautiously optimistic but you know just to your point if we've got time Merlin I think that's a great point that our friend said about you know the different driving factors from you know back in 2000 to this but let, let, let's put this into perspective again there's always going to be something driving the market right and you know while back then it was you know companies with no proven worth and everybody getting excited isn't everybody driving up tesla and amazon and apple over the last six months and just been getting excited too mm -hmm. like if we want to talk about it it's the same thing it's like what did suddenly you know their profits increase that much did suddenly tesla's profits increase that much no there's where is it people are chasing yield i mean that's all it really is the house market's kind of flatlined it's up and it's kind of stayed where it is you know we didn't get the massive decrease in the, in, in, the, in the real estate sector worldwide because guess what everybody's staying at their homes and if no one's selling the prices aren't going to go down so the market rather than go up is kind of flatlined so there's no money if you haven't got you know it to go and buy new places right now you know so yep. that's all it is done. Banks are offering you nothing. You got CDs, lucky you, right? There's nothing out there except stocks. So it's chasing yield. Where are you going to go? You're going to go with the markets that move the most. That's exactly what it is. And I think it's an excitement that's driven this market up, backed up by the fact that, yeah, tech companies are making money because everybody's working from home now and everybody needs tech. But what also, there's subtle clues. You know, I've got a chart up here of Netflix. This is what doesn't make sense, okay? You take the Netflix, $473 a share. How do they make their money, Merlin? What do they do? Yeah. They have a $9.99 a month subscription, right? That's it. You've got a company like Disney worth $122 a share with multiple streams of revenue, a cheaper su subscription service, still making money, even though their parks were closed down, doing incredibly well. One of the most successful streaming services ever launched, Disney Plus. Yet their share price is a third. Really? You want to tell me fundamentals always are the answer? Absolutely no. Again, people have a bug for these tech stocks, you know, and I think that it's all about chasing yield. And what happens is the minute a market starts moving, 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 what happens is people jump on board it. And mm -hmm. then the nasty thing is you start to get the vicious sell-offs like you've seen in Apple, you know, a sell-off that since the stock split, bam, crushed. Tesla, since the stock split, bam, crushed. So, you know what? This is why I, I find fundamentals you have to take in a very, very, very wide thing. And whether it's you know, a quality company or not a quality company. You can go back and look at 2008. Google was a quality company then. Apple was a quality company then. They got smashed when the overall market went down. So I don't care how good your stock is. If the overall market goes down, it's going to go down with it. That's mm -hmm. just fact. You can't get away from that. Yeah, I agree. I think that what made this uh, this time a little bit different is how the money, that it did crash for a little bit on those symbols you just mentioned, but then the money just came pouring back in. And these these rates of return are just nuts. I actually brought up the, uh, the chart I have for you guys here now is the national NASDAQ futures going back into 2000 um, and you know we talk about the dot-com bubble bursting that's back here on the hard left side of this chart it seems so insignificant now <laughs> when you when you look at history it's like just it's nothing I mean it actually scares me a little bit because if we do get a correction to any extent that's even near that I mean, you're looking at a massive decline in the NQ but right now we don't need to worry about that we have to still worry about that continued uptrend
Mm. Um, Sam, let's talk about gold. That was one that came in earlier. Uh, gold, I've got gold, the, gold. The gold, right. gold, the GC. So uh, I've got gold up here on the monthly time frame. Obviously, monthly when I don't do the adjustments, guys, it's going to tweak it a little bit. Um, I'll go back to the daily because that's what I'm working with. We've been talking about this kind of being a descending triangle for about the past month and a half. It just broke a couple of days ago, showing aggressive yep. moves to the downside. What do you take on gold? Oh. Finally, because it was getting pretty dull, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it was super exciting, and then it went boring. Oh, I know, I know. Hey, listen, with everything that's going on and still the levels of uncertainty in the world that we have and all that yada, 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 it's just like anything. Is it worth jumping on this bandwagon now of selling off here i mean can you still see my charts because yep, if you can you. i'll take a few levels i mean look i think there's some still some room for the short selling opportunities what's screaming out at me uh right now is around this area here i gotta say around this this will be the area this 1800 dollars mark for me uh, i think if that area holds uh we'll get a nice little pushback probably at least to around 19,000. i think there's about a hundred dollars worth of price movement between here and here that we could get some price action on this uh, I think a little bit of profit taking needed to be taken on this. I agree. Um, you know, but again, but then again, the thing, this is the thing, you know, you start to see, you know, the market have another sell off. I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit more downside in the market on here and then comes right into this time and then bang, we sell off in the S&Ps again and the gold shoots its way back up again. I, I got to say, like, gold has been above these benchmark levels for quite some time now. I mean, if you really look at the benchmark levels, since we broke these previous areas here, this cluster of trading that took place, let's call it $1,500. Okay, and I know that's a big wide number, but Merlin, seriously, while gold's above 1500 it ain't going anywhere. Mm. You know, for me, it's just pullback city. I mean, that's it. So this is much needed profit taking, I think, but I think there's some pretty tasty opportunities when we get down a little bit lower. If you're feeling a little bit more adventurous, uh, right now and do feel like on the short side of things, you know, you could whet your appetite. Somewhere around this 1900 is going to be a nice little area for a consideration down. But just be careful going into that $1,800 mark. That's my take on gold. I'm not writing it off yet. No way. Yeah, I, I actually, I like gold. I, I think it's going to pose some good buying opportunities here. You know, we've had a pretty significant sell-off. I'll bring up my chart here real quick just so mm -hmm. I can get a percentage on this move that yeah. we sold off from those peaks to where we're at right now. Um, you know, a 10% drop and in a month and a half is not too bad for the price of gold. I do agree. I think 1827 is kind of where I'm looking at as a buy point in here. So for those of you, those of you selling um, options, hey, you might want to sell some puts right around that 182 mark. Yeah. Um, Jorge says, hello team, I'll mate for class. I'm pretty sure you're late for class, but hey, if you want to mate for class, feel free, brother. Do what you do. What you got to do. Mate, mating is always encouraged. And yes, Devon. Yes, um he says, you know all about that right now, Merlin. It's all good. It's good, all good, good. <laughs> I do. Uh, Devin <laughs> says, if you look at Disney's, has four times as much float shares as Netflix. In reality, both have similar market cap. Yes. Um, I, I think what, what Sam was alluding to there, and, and you're right. And again, guys, never make this mistake. Don't just look at the share price and say, hey, this one's cheap and this one's expensive. It could com sure. be completely different with regards to float or outstanding shares. So your valid point. I think what Sam was pointing out though is, if you look at why Facebook will probably never disappear, Facebook in essence is simply MySpace, right? It's MySpace on steroids. But what they've done yeah. is they've taken those billions of dollars and they've now gone in and bought up a whole bunch of different companies. I have friends who go, oh, Facebook is for, is for Gen X. It's stupid. Nobody uses that, right? Millennials. And they're like, well, I'm using Instagram. Well, hey, dumbass. You know who owns Instagram? Facebook. So <laughs> Disney is to got, to got this whole spectrum of products and services from ESPN to Disney physical parks to merchandise to TV shows to network. It's more diversified per se than Netflix. And I think that's what Sam was getting at is, is when you're looking, especially from a long-term investment perspective, Netflix might be more susceptible to people all of a sudden going back to work and not staying at home all the time and watching TV, whereas Disney would benefit from that because now the parks get it. So I think that's the I, point he was trying to get I at. think absolutely. And no, I understand that stock splits and everything I'm saying, but, you know, and again, maybe I may, didn't make it clear as well, but, you know, you, you've got to understand you know, the way you see a company like Netflix and how it's taken off, you know, over these last, you know, however many years versus, you know, a, a Disney. You know, I, I'm going to say I'm always going to pick something to me that's safer on a fundamental point. It's got multiple 
multiple streams of income and services are wrapped around it. I mean, that's why, you know, you look at Google. I mean, my God, the world's not going to live without Google, but they haven't just sat back and gone, well, we're just a great search engine. I mean, their list of products is fantastic. The advancements in technology that they've made is fantastic. You know, Facebook, you bring up is a great point. I mean, I literally, you know, I've got an Oculus Quest VR. I'm excited about Oculus 2, the things that mm -hmm. they're doing. They own WhatsApp, you know, Instagram and everything. You know, they've got fingers in a lot of pies. They're more than just, you know, they're not just glorified MySpace anymore. So, you know, I think that if you are looking from a fundamental point of view at a good investment, you know, you want anything with multiple streams of income, you know. That's what everybody as an individual wants and that's every, what everybody's every company wants. I mean, looking at it right now, I mean, I, I'm an Apple guy. Am I going to write Apple off? What they're, what they're planning on doing with Apple One, I mean, absolute genius. I mean, I'm not being funny, but they're bundled services for an entire family of, of, of six people for 30 bucks a month. Genius. And now here they are, bang, going in in the fitness realm. You know, that mm -hmm. on a fundamental perspective, all day long, I don't care how bad the market's going to sell off. You know, that will be a good investment. But what you've got to remember is you still want to get it at a good price. And no matter how good that company is, if the overall tech sector comes down, it gets dragged down with it, albeit not as bad. So, yeah. you know, if, if it pushed down to me, I'd rather have an investment in a Facebook or a Disney, you know, or an Apple than a Netflix. That's really kind of the point that I would say is the best way to take that. Yep. Uh, let's do one last one. Bring up uh, RTY Futures, the Russell 2000. Adam says... My favorite. You love it. He says, do you think that daily gap gets filled? Um, and I'll bring it up on my side as well so we can see. Uh, let's see. He's, I'll, I'll actually bring Sam's because he's got the screen up there. There is a daily gap that goes back to the 15th of July. That's probably one of the, the few gaps on this chart that you guys will see. Um, it looks like we're, we're headed there pretty quickly right now. We might have even triggered it. You know, just about yeah, almost true. on there. Uh, all my on there. I feel like your tech support today, Merlin. Like <laughs> I've just been I'm like I'm your new I'm your new tech support. I love you know? it. You know it's okay. your show. I'm tech support. I'm just <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel like I've talked more than you today. I've, <laughs> Trust I've me, these really people bothered. don't want to hear me talk anymore. They I'm want getting, you, buddy. I'm getting a little cabin fevered out right now. So this is my closest thing to social interaction. <laughs> so it's been wonderful. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, to me, I mean, could you go a little bit deeper in that area? But yeah, actually, that was a big, a big, a big area that we um, that we were looking at uh, just over the last couple of days uh, in the trade room and stuff, you know. And I think it, what I like about this area as well. I mean, I've seen this with gaps. I mean, and that is a genuine real gap because, as you know, with the futures market, you don't always get that. Um, but, uh, you know, for me, that, that, that is a, that's a major threshold on this right now. And we're actually in a lot of monthly and weekly significant price points right now. Again, interesting how we, we, we're closing, like, with this kind of indecision doji. And, you know, people pour, like, I, do you know what I really hate, dude? I'm going to go on my soapbox just towards the end of the show here. But I hate it when, you know, experts go on there and they, like, pour cold water all over traditional technical analysis. And, oh, candlestick patterns don't work. And moving averages don't work. And all that. All this conventional stuff doesn't work. That is absolute BS okay <laughs> if the problem is not the tools it's the how you use the tools you know a hammer is very very good at hammering things in if you try and saw a piece of wood in half with it it's not gonna work right the problem is people use tools the wrong way right yep. and like one thing I'm sorry you know candlesticks can be really powerful you know you look at the chart here and you see all these rejection candles and all this selling pressure on there those wicks were telling you just that there was a ton of buying uh, selling pressure mm -hmm. in there you know you'd be foolish to ignore that kind of stuff right I mean it's it, it really is so again you know when I see candlestick patterns and I start to see here where we've got you know a little bit of kind of indecision coming around here I kind of like that because when I see that I think a lot of people expect on a major level the market's going to come in here and go woohoo off it goes right mm -hmm. it very rarely does that in fact it wouldn't surprise me to maybe see and if I just kind of erase that and do it again wouldn't it might surprise me to see another doji and maybe another doji and then a lift off because there could be a good lot of accumulation going on in this area right now so at the moment, I think this is a pretty significant point. It's on my radar as an area that I'm leaning on right now on the Russell. Uh, and I wouldn't be so just don't you just got to be very careful at these really key areas because you get a lot of indecision typically there because there's unwinding of positions and reloading the boat. And again, it's not all, you know, this is all not like, you know, sugar cakes and fairies. The market doesn't hit a certain area always and just turn. Some of the best moves I've ever had, I've had to wait for, Merlin. I'm sure you're the same, you know. Yep. You've got in and it just stagnant, stagnant. Yep. And the minute you close the trade, then it does what you expected it to do. Absolutely. That's why you can't mess with this stuff. So I, I think the area is strong, Merlin. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit more, especially tomorrow, you know. Although, you know, coming into the weekend, I mean, Friday's tip in the market does like to finish good. But, you know, I'll just play it as I find it until it breaks. And then if it breaks, 
you know, and it starts to make a few new highs on here, it could make a challenge for 15, and then you'd get to buy some pullbacks on it anyway. So, I like it. I I'm, to, I'm with you. I need I to breathe today. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm not breathing. I'm just take a like, deep, deep breath. You can I'm do it. I'm super tired, believe it or not. I'm really tired. Can you like, imagine when he's full of energy, folks? I no, mean, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm full of energy, I'm all like, yeah, man. You know. But I think when I'm tired, I just kind of overcompensate for being tired. Because I normally stand up when I do this, but I'm sitting down in my bouncy chair today. So, so um, hey, well, I sit every time I do this show, so it's fine. You're good. <laughs> Um, yeah, Taylor Frames with us today. Anyways, Good to have you with us, Taylor. I haven't seen you in quite some time. Hope you're doing well, my friend. Uh, he actually points out something interesting for the folks out there. We've been looking at this, um, the Russell 2000 and the RTY futures, but you could very easily look at IWM. And a lot yep. of times I actually prefer to look at them on the ETF. So, for example, I won't look at the SPY, or EM, the ES. I'll look at SPY. Reason being is you're gonna you're more likely to see some gaps show up on the ETF yeah. because it doesn't have 24 hour trading and and a lot of times those gaps become more relevant on that uh, on that chart so good to have you with well, us. I actually do the same thing. I like to see those gaps because they are major imbalances and they give you a different perspective. So mm -hmm. to me, the levels that are created during the hours of nine till four or nine thirty to four are always the more important ones. So yeah, I like that. You know, for example, that chart you got up right now. I mean, there's a gap that goes all the way down to the one thirties on the Russell two thousand, and you know you 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 wonder where it might go if we can break that 138 level well there's mm -hmm. it's it's much much lower down there so you know now, now i can start to forecast where it may be going if it does in fact break this specific level so i, I love yeah. doing that with these i think magnets yeah. or price uh, gaps are a huge magnet for price they are a beautiful thing one of my favorite things to work on i do i have whole strategies around gaps i think they're a very cool thing if you can be consistent they're a very powerful tool they really are um sam like we're, i look at the clock and i'm like holy cow we're, we've been running here we really go late, again so. So let's let, let's wrap it up here. Uh, tell me a little bit about what's going on with uh, stockability. I haven't uh, I've been I've been seeing your site, seeing some of the materials you guys putting up. Look like you're building your team out even more. What's going on over there? Yeah, we're we're building our, our team. Um, you know, we've we've been really really busy. You know, servicing the students, um, our founding members, and uh, been really good. You know, working on our marketing, all that kind of stuff. You know, got our own little show now that we do once a week. Uh, take stock live which you're going to be a guest on very soon which is great right. uh, i certainly don't do as good a job as you do oh please um, I, but i i do it's different hosting it's easy when you come on you just ask me <laughs> questions and then <laughs> and then off i go right it's a lot easier coming up with the material and stuff but you know it's been a lot of fun doing that um you know i'd say you know like now we're just obviously kind of like slowly but steadily you know just making sure everything's been rocked so already made changes on our website but what we've been doing now which is quite cool is we have our weekly webinars uh which people just come and see a little bit about what we do and we're, you know we're also doing a very cool little thing I did my very first one yesterday I call it a little market immersion class which is just like a one day online thing with myself and Dan and we just go through what we do and show everybody what we do and stuff so um, that's one of the things that we've started doing now and you know it's slowly but surely building but when we've we, we try you know we, we have our, a very active live coaching so we do our live trading session six days six times a week but then we have a lot of coaching and you know updates that goes through through push alerts and stuff so it's a handful but you know yeah. you got to do what you got to do we're very proud of what we're doing uh and um you know and, and it's, it's great you know it's, it's hard work but it's great and uh, people always but this is funny right Merlin? people always say if you're working so hard on that does it affect your trading and i'm like it does it actually makes it a little bit better believe mm -hmm. it or not and that people will be like well why and i'm like because i don't know and everybody's different right dan's different to me my partner mm -hmm. but me i just find that when i've got an audience and when i've got students in front of me i don't make any dumb mistakes because i can be impulsive sometimes and yeah. impatient and when i have students i'm a lot more patient so i get better trades so i find it's been helping me in that respect it's funny well. i found the same thing out with me teaching as well it's really yeah uh, it does help you significantly follow your rules and stick to you know there's an old phrase that says do as i say not as i do um because a lot of times when we're left our own devices we'll make mistakes and we'll do the stuff we're not supposed to do but when you're teaching in front of someone and they're watching you you know mm -hmm. your feet are held to the fire so to speak on that one so yeah it's it definitely yeah, helps no, out. It it is, it is a help. But, you know, like I say, it's slow and sure. I mean, it's interesting times right now out there, you know. And, um, you know, in the world of trading education, you know, there's a lot of competition out there and a lot of people doing a lot of things and you have to stand by your guns and, you know, do what you think is right. And I think that I've created something pretty unique that's familiar but very different as well. I guess time will tell. But, yeah, no regrets doing it. Well, maybe the, the workload. I regret the workload. <laughs> Well, you're doing it's fine. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Thank you for asking. So, yeah. And, uh, you know, I just say to somebody, if you want to check out, go one of our, you know, complimentary webinars and come and maybe check out our one-day class and see what you think about it. It's all Sound, good. Sounds good. 
All right, Sam, well, thanks for coming on and talking for the entire program and letting me take a break. That was great. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do today, really? I mean, I, I didn't I, do I, I, my charts are even still up as well. All right, guys, I'm going to say goodbye to Merlin Money. Thanks for being a guest on uh, Trader Merlin Show today. Uh, tomorrow, Sam's going to be uh, doing Take Stock Live. I might as well just carry on. Right? <laughs> You're awesome. All right, buddy. Well, thank you so much, Quinn. I appreciate it. We'll hopefully see you in, another, in a few weeks, my friend. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. All right, guys, have a great week. Thanks so much. All right, take care. Guys, that was Sam Evans of StockAbility.com. If you want to know more information, you can visit their website, which is StockAbility.com, and get more information on the different programs, etc. So uh, always entertaining having him on. I love the analysis approach, very simple, and I love his comment early on as we were going over Hector's question um, on a specific chart on GGAL, where he says, I hope I'm not oversimplifying it. And my response will always be, I hope you oversimplify it. Make it as easy as possible, because as I've seen from some charts that people have sent me in the past, you're making too much work out of it, right? It, trading should be real simple. It should be you look at it very quick, make a quick decision, and not spend hours and hours and hours and hours trying to make one single trade or doing so much analysis that you actually scare yourself out of making the trade, which happens to a lot of people as well. All right, let me go into your economic calendar for today and tomorrow. Today was kind of interesting. I'm really surprised that Bernanke's speeches, or Bernanke's, Powell's speeches today did not have as much of an impact. Here you'll see what happened out there today. Of course, the Swiss National Bank came out with a negative 75 basis point, no big change there. In the red box is what happened today, very positive with new home sales. That's a huge jump, guys. They were expecting it to contract from 965,000 new homes built to 890. It jumped to over 1 million. That means that there is a surge in demand right now, which of course is very positive for these markets going forward. So keep an eye on that one. Uh, you also had uh, Mnuchin, uh, Mnuchin speak, Powell and Williams. And um, I don't know, I don't think he gave too many glowing comments for the market. Here's what's happening for tomorrow. It's a quiet day, but there is expected to be a huge decline in durable goods orders. Previous month was 11.4%, and they're expecting it to drop to 1.1%. My guess is you'll probably come up a little bit higher than 1.1 as they're setting these expectations very low so that when we beat them, it gooses the market to the upside. All right, um, that's it for today. If I didn't get a chance to get any questions or I missed something, guys, do me a favor. You can send that in at TraderMerlin.com. Put it in the comments down below the YouTube video, and I will get to all those on tomorrow's show with a nice cold glass of whiskey. Of course, if you guys have any uh, questions, you can send them in to TraderMerlin.com as well as below the video. And also, go to uh, the little like button there, little thumbs up, and give me a little thumbs up if you liked today's show. And, of course, if you liked our guest as well. That will do it for me, everybody. Thank you so much. I will see you manana.